Hello and welcome to International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines: Colombians hold strike demanding peace met with state police crackdown. UN celebrates 75th anniversary of foundation amid concerns of unilateralism. Algeria to hold early legislative elections following November referendum. Uproar over sentencing of prominent artists by Sudanese court. On Monday thousands of Colombians joined the national strike and mobilized across the country against the right-wing government of President Ivan Duque. Several massive demonstrations were carried out in different cities against police brutality, the economic crisis induced by the COVID-19 pandemic and the continuing assassination of social leaders. Despite the pandemic, a large number of citizens and members of various left-wing and progressive organizations took to the streets throughout the country to express their discontent. The call for the national protest and strike was given by several social organizations and trade unions. The capital Bogota turned into one of the epicenters of the national protest condemning the indifference of the national government towards the crisis. Demonstrations were held in at least 14 places in the city. The protesters were met with large mobilizations of the state security forces. The officials of the SMAD, which is an anti-rioting police, responded to peaceful demonstrations with violent repression. In addition, a large number of protesters were detained in these cities and several others were injured. One of the central demands of the protests was justice for 46-year-old law student and taxi driver Javier Ordonez who was tortured and murdered by two officers in Bogota on the 9th of September. Demands were also raised to ensure justice for 13 other people killed by the police on September 10th in the demonstrations held demanding justice for Ordonez. The protesters also demanded an end to the wave of massacres hitting the country. Colombians demanded the national government comply with the peace agreement signed with the FARC resistance group. According to the Institute of Development and Peace Studies, 246 people have been killed in 61 massacres registered in Colombia till September 20th of this year. The latest massacre took place on that day in the department of Narino where four people were shot to death. In our next story on Monday, leaders from most of its member countries spoke via pre-recorded messages in a special session of the UN General Assembly held to commemorate its 75th foundation year. Hinting at the complete US disregard for international laws, some of the leaders highlighted the need for strong commitments to multilateralism. Warnings were also raised against attempts to boss over other countries. Speaking at the meeting, UN General Secretary Antonio Guterres said that the UN gives hope to most people around the world. However, he added, it is only as strong as its members' commitment to its ideas and each other. He also emphasized the need of multilateralism at a time when the world is facing serious threats such as COVID-19 pandemic and climate change. Speaking at the virtual meeting, Chinese President Xi Jinping argued that no country should be allowed to dominate the world and keep all of the advantages of development to itself emphasizing on the need to increase the representation and voices of developing countries in order to make the world more balanced he also argued the case of multilateralism and said that there must be no practice of exceptionalism or double standards us president donald trump did not participate in the meeting despite being listed as the first speaker from the member states the functioning of the un and its auxiliary organizations such as the who has faced increased challenges in recent years due to the trump administration's reluctance to cooperate and adhere to international laws and conventions. Now, next story on Sunday, Algerian President Abdul Majid Tebone announced that the country will hold early legislative elections after a scheduled referendum on constitutional amendments on November 1st. The president, however, did not specify any date for the elections. In an interview to a local television channel, Tebone said that the proposal is fully in line with the requirements of modern state building and responds to the demand, response to the demands of the popular movement of the Hirak. The national referendum to be held next month follows the Algerian parliament passing a draft constitutional reforms by a show of hands vote. 256 members of the 462 present in the People's National Assembly voted in favour of the amendments. The reforms are aimed at expanding constitutional freedoms and giving a greater role in decision making to the parliament and the prime minister of the country. The government also asserted that the reforms would bring a radical change in the system of government's governance, strengthening both the fight against corruption as well as the quest for social justice. The reforms would make it mandatory for the president to choose the prime minister from a party that has a majority in the parliament instead of the existing practice of choosing any politician of his or her liking. The post of the vice president would also be abolished. The reforms also prohibit the suspension of media activity or the dissolution of political parties and associations except by judicial ruling. In our next story, artists, activists and international associations have condemned Sudan's judiciary and police and accused them of bias. This follows a verdict on September 17th when five of the 11 artists arrested on August 10th were sentenced to two months imprisonment and a fine of US dollars 90 each. The court had ruled that they were guilty of threatening peace and breaching public safety. The remaining six also facing the same charges are expected to be sentenced on September 27th. The Islamic fundamentalists who were accused by the artists of physically assaulting them, however, have not been arrested. Police have also refused to press charges against one of their own investigators, 
who is accused of physically assaulting a female artist in custody. These artists from the theatre group known as Civic Labs were sympathisers of the December 2018 revolution, which overthrew former Islamist dictator Omar al-Bashir. Harsh condemnation has also come from the resistance committees, which formed the backbone of the December 2018 revolution. The resistance committees continue to pressure the transitional governments towards completing its reforms. The committees in Khartoum have called for protests to secure the release of the artists. So today, we are not just demonstrating, but also we are demanding that uh, the end of the trial of Golden Dawn and the decision will be on 7th of October, they will send them in prison. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,